Hi guys, uh, it's been a while and today I'm going to show you on what I was working previous weeks and I hope you will enjoy today's video. Also, I want to say that I've done a stream with the Game Engineering podcast. Uh, we discussed the basics of Vulkan, so if you haven't seen it, uh, somewhere here will be a link. So if you're interested in knowing what is Vulkan and how it works, then maybe you will find this uh, content uh, interesting. And uh, let's start with the presentation of what have changed in the project. First, I'm going to start. Um, I've pressed escape to be able to select a desired level. Uh, now let's go to the most interesting one. Um, so, lots of things were added. The part I was uh, concentrated mo the most was related to the scene uh, UI manager because I'm super curious in uh, improving my uh, C++ knowledge uh, and skills and such tasks I guess are boosting this uh, the most so I was working on the uh, correct enumeration of uh, game objects that are in the scene also with some like information about them and uh, I also added an, uh, an option to change textures of the object and like a position and everything if you want. This will be overwritten for your uh, like uh, scene uh, and uh, basically file uh, will be updated with a new information. And it was also something that took me a while. So uh, let's say we are interested in this monkey. We have already the position of it, the texture name, model name, and material which is which is which it is using with the fragment and vertex shaders. And here we have uh, texture uh, examples that we can use. They are they lay in the uh, folder of the assets for textures. And now we can basically select whatever uh, texture we want. And for example, I will update it for the object. File was overwritten and I will show it to you probably right now. Okay, so now if we are going to take a look into the scene level, we have as always like scene uh, name here and the object information for each object. It, I also added a string tag for it just to be able to beautifully uh, output the name of the object uh, and without like uh, numerical IDs. And uh, yeah, now we can see that the file was changed to the name was changed to the placeholder. If I will reload the level, um, I will see the red uh, Anthrax AI texture there. And for example, I can change it for this one or like better to this one. Update it, you can see it was overwritten. And I can again upload the level and we will see the back the desired texture. So I really like this because uh, it is very fun. It was a very fun task to do. And uh, yes, yeah, so this is something that I had a very good time with. And yeah, let's uh, just f in purpose of um, tests change something else here. Uh, oh, it's cube again. And like, let's go to this one. Yes, the position also was changed. Let's uh, update. It is now the update work per object. So all the time when I want to overwrite something, I need to select the desired object. So I updated it and you can see that the position changed and the texture name was also changed. And it is very cool. And now the cube will be the same and the animated object will change, will be changed. The other thing that you might notice is the beautiful outline that I've added. And uh, it is also something that I wanted to implement a very long time ago. And I was searching through the internet how the outlines can be done. And then I found a very nice tutorial or like the link about the mask approach. So now whenever I have a selected object, 
I am passing additional pa render pass uh, to the cre to create a mask of this object. Then I run an outline shader where the mask is a sampler and I am trying to detect an edges and then write, uh, draw this beautiful outline. And I think it is very cool. Especially, I love how the how it how it works when the object is behind some other object, and uh, yeah, this is very cool. The gizmo is still in the moment of my suffering, struggling, and I need to find a, a way how to improve it, and especially like time and motivation. But as you see, I've already done some. Uh, <laughs> decorations to that like I mean change some colors and also the thing I really am glad I finally made is that now my uh, gizmo uh, size is being set according to the distance from the camera which is very very good because previously it was uh, in static size which um, result in when you are too far away uh, the gizmo is like being too small and now when I am uh, zooming out it is being resized and I kind of like it it is very cool and I can still like use it and move it and yeah it is very very cool and I also make it fixed size when the camera is too close uh, so like it, you will notice when it happens like on on this distance it is it is being static so yeah and I, I really like it and yeah so this is how it works okay let's go I guess probably briefly through the code just just really briefly so the thing what I was trying to change in the scene it was very overwhelmed by the functionality it was like a huge garbage that was uh, trying to handle rendering somehow and I was trying to improve it uh, at least how I could and um, I've decided to the same way as I have uh, the dedicated object for handling of game objects I've, of, I wanted to create something that will handle uh, the models and the models I decided to call things that are being rendered so let's say we have the main module that being is being parsed from the scene file that is uh, passed when you try to load it and uh, first we populate this module with the objects that were parsed then i have some additional uh, let's say hard-coded modules that are just uh, my attempts to make this engine beautiful let's say just like this uh, 3d grid or uh, outlines and uh, masking so yeah you can see how i call this uh, module rendering so here we render just the, for the cur current scene then i'm rendering grid then i'm doing mask then i'm doing outline shader and then i'm doing gizmo and uh, i also try to improve and like somehow somehow abstract the update functions so module handles all the updates too so inside of the game module we basically have a current render key and uh, now for example when i'm trying to update texture ui when we change the texture in ui i'm calling update function for that and then i'm just checking what type update type it is and then i'm doing the basically the same way that i was doing before and so here i'm just updating the descriptors for the texture of the, of the desired object. Before, my reload resource function was a mess and uh, it was very confusing to look at it, to try to understand what's going on. And now I decided to try to somehow generalize it. So I'm updating Vulkan part, I'm resetting audio state, I am uh, resetting engine state, and then I'm calling populate modules, which is very interesting function, I guess. And uh, it is basically uh, here it's like being called like game models populate for the current scene i'm also setting what uh, attachments will be and what bindless type it is and i'm also doing this my small lambda um, check uh, condition state for what uh, 
objects to include uh, from the game object uh, data type. Uh, okay guys, I guess that's all for today. I hope that you enjoyed this small update video and uh, then have a great week and I guess see you next week probably on a stream or something like that. Then uh, see you. Bye.